But DCIS, it's ductal carcinoma in situ. The name carcinoma, the nomenclature, they're talking about taking that word out because it scares women as soon as they hear it. They're like, oh my God, take my breast off. When it's actually only a pre, it's a precancer and um, that can lead to carcinoma. It's only found on a mammogram as little microcalcifications. And women are prophylactically having their breasts taken off in fear that this might metastasize. Um, I would put to you though, and whoever's listening, that it might be the mammogram because in the, the breast is made up of epithelial cells uh, in the glandular part of it. And that's the most radiosensitive material in your body, which means you can get induced radiation cancer if you radiate that tissue. So if we keep giving women radi uh, you know, radiation year after year, and especially if they have dense breast tissue, they're more susceptible to these induced cancers. And is DCIS, in fact, one of those induced cancers? And so it's a precancer. Mm -hmm. And women are getting their breasts taken off because they're running scared. I had a girlfriend that had a double mastectomy and now she's reading in the literature, well, we've been over treating these women and we really shouldn't be doing that. And she's just, you know, extremely sad, obviously. Totally. Um, and that happens a lot. It's like 20, 20 to 25% of the cancers. Yeah. Um, that's, and so the literature, that's actually one of the reasons they changed the screening schedule in 2009 is because they looked at the literature and they said, oh my gosh, between the radiation and what we're doing with this overdiagnosis and treatment, Sometimes they're giving these women radiation on top of taking their breast off. Right. It's a precancer. Yeah. So it's really, it's really ridiculous what we're doing. And that's why they said, okay, let's just let's think, rethink this and do it every other year. And you know, maybe not advised to have it under 50 because premenopausal, you're more inclined to have denser breasts. So you're more in, you're, you're gonna have more induced cancers, right? And more mammograms. So and it's a mess. It is. It is a mess. And, and, you know, let's talk about the emotional toil that it takes on women, you know, when they get these false positives and then they get, you know, more mammograms two, three months later and, oh, it's okay. It's now negative. Um, you know, there's, there's such a psychological uh, toil that it takes on women because that's the last thing you want to hear is, you know, you possibly have breast cancer. So what I do you think about that? I actually have a story. Um, yeah, I have dense breasts apparently, which they kept telling me. I'm like, okay, how's my mammogram? I didn't even know what dense breasts meant. <laughs> now I do. Right. But they said, um, we can't, because of that, we can't tell if you might have cancer. Can you come in for another mammogram? Well, when you go in for that second mammogram, you know, first of all, yeah, you're shaking for like two weeks until you get the results. And they really crank up the radiation on that second one. Now it's called, I, I believe that's when they call it a diagnostic um, mammogram and the, you know, the radi radiologist is hanging out behind the screen, cranking up until they can see, try and differentiate and came back negative And I was totally shaking. like, uh, And I, I just went, oh, you know, I don't know about this test. <laughs> There's gotta be a better way. I mean, you know, yeah. we're, we're told radiation causes cancer, but then it's okay to radiate our breasts. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and, and there's plenty of studies, which I'm sure you're very well aware of, you know, the 25 year study done on 90,000 women in Canada, the Canadian study, you know, which showed after 25 years, you know, mammography did not reduce breast cancer mortality rate, not even by 1%. And, you know, there's more and more tests like that that are, that are popping up. And that one just got attacked by the whole community. <laughs> Canada's like, we had it audited and it was still came out correctly. Whoops. Yeah, you tell them. <laughs> yeah, the te it, actually the whole controversy over the what was in the literature. Um, I, I actually studied that for my book and did a lot of um, research on it. And the people were at each other's throats over this. Um, and there was a couple of people that, of course, had the patents on the on the machines that were just saying, you guys are just totally wrong. And the scientists are like, no, we're not. And and unfortunately, when that happens, it paralyzes the community when the research is like so tangled up and there's two sides and it's kind of the status quo and nothing's going to change, which happened until 2009 when they changed. They finally went, no, 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 this is crazy what we're doing. But it took, you know, 10, 20 years to do that. So right, right. not good. 
All right, so let's talk about uh, thermography and you know how different that is, and you know what um, you know how that can benefit women, and how we should always back it up with another test. So let's talk about thermography. So thermography is a test of physiology, and it uses um, infrared um, light camera to see inflammation in your breasts, and it, it, cancer is an inflammatory process. So what's, what I love about thermography, and people love the concept, they just keep saying the studies aren't there, and actually they are there, they just don't look in the right place. But um, I love it because it's actually, it's actually preventative to cancer, because if you can pick up that inflammation before it turns into a solid tumor, which is really, really hard to reverse once it's in there. Um, as you know, you had to do that several times. Um, you want to pick it up before it turns into that and reverse the situation and, you know, change your lifestyle, not easy. And, but, you know, better, certainly better than having a solid tumor form. Um, and then ultrasound is a test of anatomy, like an MRI and a mammogram. And that is a, you know, non-invasive, no radiation, neither one of these has radiation. So it's a backup tool to um, the thermogram. So, um, Galena Magalco, who's a good friend of Dr. Ben Johnson's, she was the one who explained all this to me. She said, you know, we had one patient that had cancer in both breasts. So when I was, when I was looking at the breasts side by side, their, you know, their thermal activity, it looked the same. And if I hadn't done an ultrasound, that's how she picked up the tumors. So that's just one instance where it's so, it, it's really, you have to have that ultrasound about the same time you have the thermogram just to double check that there's not a, a mass in there. And you can also differentiate, um, you know, liquid cysts versus solid tumors. And there's a lot of good reasons to get an ultrasound as well. So why we're not doing this is beyond me, but I think it should be studied. And in the US, it's been studied abroad, but I really would like to see a, a thermogram ultrasound study against mammogram and see which one comes out on top because yeah. the, the ultrasound studies, a lot of the, you know, the, the ones that are well conducted are saying that ultrasound is just as good as a mammogram as far as accuracy. So why aren't we using that instead? Anyway, especially women with dense breasts, at the very least give them the option to get an ultrasound, have insurance pay for it instead of a mammogram because it's just radiation and a waste of time and money and it doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Well, and, and it's difficult for women because a lot of times they can't get an ultrasound unless they get a mammogram first. I mean, they really have to fight with their insurance or they pay out of pocket. Right. So that's yeah. really, really frustrating. Now, um, have you come across with thermography? Now there's different cameras, different you know companies and different types of analysis. Have you like seeing the difference between the different thermography companies or do you recommend one over another or are they kind of basically all the same? So the cameras differ largely. And that's one thing I would encourage women if they're going to go that route to make sure they do their research. I actually, in my film, I have a website of where, um, you know, I'm not really allowed to recommend, but um, this is a, a, a doctor out of um, Los Angeles that, um, that interprets, and he's been doing this, you know, he, he learned under Dr. Hobbins, which I guess is the grandfather of thermograms, and he's very particular, and he, he wants to make sure everybody's got the right equipment, they know how to operate it, and he himself does the in interpretation, who, because he's so well educated in this, um, but there's, you know, if you go to somebody who's got a $200 thermography camera, chances are you're not going to get accurate test results. Um, so I think the people I've talked to said the software is actually the most expensive. I think the cameras are like 5,000. You probably know that better than I, the good ones. Um, there's a couple companies and I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're in my film. Um, but the, the software is one of the most important things and that's like 20, $30,000. Right. So if you could just ask a thermographer, how much did you pay for all your equipment? And they say a couple thousand dollars, I would get the heck out of there. That's <laughs> an yeah. easy way to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely uh, the ones that I've worked with have been, you know, in the twenty-five, thirty thousand dollar range. So it's not, it's not, it's very precise equipment, and the software is is important because it's translating visually, you know, the infrared heat that's coming off the body into, you know, an image. So that image is very important. 
And it's not just the color imaging that's important also, there's also the grayscale, right? Where you can just go black and white and, and look to see if there's any blood flow and vascularity in, in the breast tissue. Right. So now you've got a really interesting film. So let's talk about the film and, and you know, how, I mean, where do you start when you do a film like that? Like what was, <laughs> pro, what was, what was the process in your mind when you decided I'm gonna make a movie about this? I think I wasn't thinking. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I decided if I knew now what I knew then, you know, right. I knew then what I know now, opposite. Um, so uh, I just, I was writing screenplays that weren't going anywhere. It was six months or six years after my husband passed away. And I said, just kind of sitting around going, eh, you know, I'm not really contributing to society. So that's when I grabbed, I grabbed a, I just happened to, it was happenstance, you know, that's sometimes that just happens serendipity in life. And I met this gentleman who wanted to learn how to do professional videos. And I said, let's go on the road <laughs> because I just had a feeling I wasn't going to get in any big print, you know, what's going on in the cancer area because of, you know, big medicine. So I thought, you know, they can't stop a documentary film. What can they do? So um, we went on the road, went all over Europe, all over the US, talking to a gazillion doctors. I think I have like 200 hours of film. Wow. <laughs> and, um, but I, out of that, I came, you know, that's how I got my, my mammogram, my whatever, my boobs film out of that, because I just felt it was really important. And maybe it was something that women need to know at the very least. And maybe if we all raise our voices, we can change what's going on because it's, it's deplorable what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and even that when I, I interviewed, thank God, um, Otis Brawley, who was the medical director at the American Cancer Society, and he said right off the bat, he said, mammography is suboptimal test. We need a better test. And I was like, oh, my gosh, ladies, did you just hear that? Right. <laughs> That's the American Cancer Society. And he had no other test. You know, he said molecular testing. But, you know, God, when, when's that going to happen? And um I don't know what the drawbacks of that are, but I'm sure there are some. <laughs> and then we have something, right? You know, he said, well, thermograms weren't, they were studied in the 70s. I said, that was a bad, that was not a well-run trial. If you look at, you know, they kicked it out right away. The radiologist said, we don't know how to run these things. So they kicked it out. And, I, and so I took in Dr. Galena to go talk to Otis Brawley when right after he left um, ACS, he's now at uh, Johns Hopkins. And I, we did this presentation for him and he said, wow, this looks, this, this looks worthy of studying. And I said, can I quote you on that? And he said, yes. So that's in my film. <laughs> but he was a lot of help to me. So.